Hello, my name is Zizel Slipovich, and I'm a musician in residence at Yale University's Fortune of Video Archive for Holocaust Testimonies. This video series is designed as a companion to our album Where is Our Homeland, which is the first volume in the archive's ongoing effort to present songs and poems performed by survivors in testimonies given to the Fortune of Archive over the last 40 years. You can learn more about the project on the archive's website, songsfromtestimonies.org. Where is Our Homeland? Songs from Testimonies Volume 1 was recorded in 2019 by the Zizel Slepovich Ensemble featuring renowned singer Sasha Luria, Craig Udelman on the violin, Joshua Camp on the accordion, keyboards and guitar, Dmitry Ishenko on the bass and myself on woodwinds. The songs in this collection differ vastly in terms of style, social and historical background, language and many other aspects, but collectively they create a multidimensional picture of Jewish life before and during World War II. Fortune of Video Archive testimonies hold a wide variety of songs and poetry. The pre-war pieces alone form quite a large group. They include traditional songs of many genres, military songs, batchones, the wedding gestures, couplets, and recitatives, Zionist songs, Bundist songs, communist songs, really a wide variety of music and poetry. Jack M., a native of the Polish town of Szydłowiec, is remembering the songs that he heard and remembered from the pre-war period. They're not only important because they constitute a um, large part of the ethnographic research of Polish Jewry, of Polish culture, of Jewish culture, but they also portray uh, how the people were really formed and shaped uh, before the war. And uh, they help us understand who those people really were as normal human beings, not as just inmates, as prisoners at concentration camps and lab slave labor camps, but human beings, Polish citizens, Jews. In his testimony, Jack is remembering uh, these songs that he heard as he was serving in the Polish army. And those are quite interesting ones. Uh, the two songs that he remembered uh, were coming mostly from his commander in his regiment. And one is quite openly anti-Semitic and the other one is rather frivolous. Um, Jack remembered them. He did not consider them um, really negative. Um, but that probably tells us about the degree of tolerance that the targeted group of population, group, societal group, develops as a survival tool. They were laughing uh, uh, on us, the, the Christians, anti-Semitic all around. They, they, they made up a song. They took, they took a, a Jew to the, to the army. In, in, instead to give him rolls with barre, they give him a cabbage soup. They made up a song like that. You remember the song? Yes, in Polish. Yeah. Zabrali do wojska biednego zidziaka. They took a, to, to, a, a, a poor, a poor guy. Nie dali mu bulki z maslem tylko kapuśniaka. They didn't give him the bulk. No. And then he said as well, dali mu karabin, cebulio nabiti. Kazali mu shelach do svoje kobiti. He gave him a, a rifle. He, he said to load him with a gun. The gun should be loaded with, with ammunition. They put in onion, an onion in. And they asked him he should, he should shoot to his own wife. <laughs> that was too, too late. 
Were there songs that you knew in the army or sang in the army? Far away from us, you know. But, uh, uh, leader. Sie hat gesagt, sie hat Lieder, sie hat gesungen im Militär. Plenty, plenty Lieder. Hey. Ich habe schon lange mal Wait a minute. I, I don't know with what to sing. Yeah, their song goes like that. A bat a, a girl, and a bat a soldier. And he thinks, uh, you, you understand poetry. Yeah. Po she we go on bed check, na kam je nju sedel, dala bim ti buži, že biš nje povedel, ja jak biš povedel, to bim się wstydzila. Żeś mnie pocałował, jam się nie bronila. The, in, in the whole, the, the, the everybody was singing the melody of the hymn. Jedzie wóz na przewóz, malowane uśnie, dałabym ci buzi, jak matula uśnie. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I nam now say, so. Matula usnęła na kominku z gaslo, dziewczę buzi dalo, aż lużeczko trzasło. Da, 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 da. This, is a, this is a merry song here. Yeah. yeah. In, yeah in, in ihr gesungen in einem mit die mit die mit die mit der mit der peilische Soldaten mit der Alles zusammen. Ja. Alles zusammen. Zabrali to wojska, jednego życiaka Nie dali mu boki z masłem, tylko kapuśniaka Dali mu karabin, cebulą nabity Skazali mu ścielać do swojej kobiety
I'm talking today about um, two songs which were recorded by an amateur folk singer, Jack Milstein, a Polish Jew. Um, he served in the Polish army. He was born in 1913, so he served in the Polish army in the late uh, 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 20s and early uh, 30s. Um, this was a difficult time, I think, for Jews in the Polish army. The NCOs, the officers, indeed the men, were not that sympathetic towards uh, Jewish recruits, particularly ones who were uh, not that acculturated. Uh, Milstein speaks, uh, sings his two songs in Polish. I mean, he has a slight accent in Polish, but his Polish is clearly good, and he has no problems either recording in Polish or indeed presumably speaking in Polish. The first song is um, a song, so-called humorous song, mocking Jewish recruits. Instead of loading his gun with bullets, the Jewish recruit loads his gun with onions. Uh, of course, onions and Jews, like garlic and Jews, is one of those East European tropes. And not only does he load his gun with onions, but he shoots at his wife. And his wife is called not Kobieta, but Kobita, the woman. It's a rather um, lower class a Polish expression. The other song he sings is a, a love song, and it's a rather attractive song. I mean, I don't see it as being humorous or in any sense anti-Jewish. And what it reflects, in my view, is the degree to which Polish popular culture had penetrated into the Jewish world in the 1920s and the 1930s. Although, particularly after 1935, anti-Semitism increased in Poland and indeed uh, in the early years of the Pilsudski regime, after Pilsudski took power in May 1926, the government uh, attempted to reach an understanding with the various national minorities and indeed with the Jews. And until the death of uh, General Pilsudski in May 1935, Jews felt relatively comfortable. Uh, but throughout this period, in the period when the Jewish situation was relatively good um, after 1926, and as it deteriorated first under the impact of the Great Depression, and then after the death of uh, Marshal Pilsudski, when a section of the government camp attempted to strengthen its position by uh, making common cause with the anti-Semitic part of the, the Polish right, um, there was a high degree of acculturation taking place. So along with the deterioration of the situation of the Jews, they went in adoption of the Polish language. And I think this is reflected in Milstein's songs. He sings songs in Polish. He has no problem singing these songs in Polish. And uh, he's clearly quite comfortable singing them in Polish. So they reflect on the one hand, the ambivalent position of the Jews, relatively stable in the late 1920s and early 1930s when uh, Milstein is serving in the Polish army, deteriorating after 1935, uh, but also it reflects the growing acculturation of Jews. And one element in this, which perhaps is linked with these songs, is the fact that Polish popular culture, Polish popular music, Polish songs uh, were uh, an area where Jews uh, were extremely active. Uh, Jews were among the people who produced jazz. The Vlasts and um, the other major Jewish singers, these were people who were accepted on the larger Polish scene. And as in the United States, uh, the Polish equivalent of Tin Pan Alley had a heavily uh, Jewish uh, component. Mm -hmm. 